Hey there, Blade fans. Welcome back. This old sword with you. And we're back once again <laughs> to Dagger Knives. Yes, D-A-G-G-E-R-R, -R, Dagger Knives. Uh, the company that definitely uses a skull as its logo. You'll see that definitively in a moment. I have two other dagger knives from the past. Now, this is a Russian company, but I believe these are made in China. I am not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. And um, I'll show you those other two knives in a moment, but let's unveil this guy. And I have to thank LTK because I saw his Instagram posting of this and I said, wow, that's one I've got to add. <laughs> so here we have what is called the Vendetta. And here's the information for you, Instagram, website, etc. Let's not wait and let's pry this big boy out of the box. It comes in a nicely padded foam box. And here we have, we're going to have to go way back today. <laughs> In order to get this knife in, but not so far back that I'm off the background. So we have this really nice, uh, almost a chalky green micarta. We have a clip that's going to stare back at you. Oh yeah, the Screaming Skull. Definitely a Halloween knife, I would say. Look at that guy, and the screws become eyes. <laughs> uh, however, yeah, it is now, looks like it's transferable to the left side. Definitely is. Rides on the surface, that clip does. And uh, you take those screws out, and they become eyes on either side. Look at that mouth. And uh, no, it's not sharp. It looks as though those teeth might actually bite you, but they don't. It's a nice spring metal clip. But now for the important part. Let's me get way back here on the background. <laughs> Look at that spear point blade dagger, if you will. And uh, it is ground only on one side and not very high, but they, they do come through quite sharp. The opening hole is in the shape of a skull as well. Here is your dagger logo. And this one's in VG10. Uh, the originals were in D2. So VG10 is a good steel uh, used frequently in the past and present by Spyderco. And a very ergonomic long slim handle. Now this is a 5 inch blade that's correct a five inch blade beautiful file like jimping here on this thumb ramp and uh, steel liner lock and a lanyard that uh, is part of the backspacer so you have roughly a half backspacer now, the funny thing is, I used some oil and tried to darken this down. It absorbed right in. I used a lot of it last night when I received this knife. And uh, it's right back to looking light again. So uh, it may or may not permanently darken. You will know if you purchase the knife. Now, I've got a flat on top on the spine with a swedge that makes it certainly look like a double-edged knife. The... Um, grind line appears to go straight down the middle but actually is slightly offset that actually gives you a more robust point now of course vendetta is a sicilian style knife and vendetta means revenge <laughs> um, let's take a chance here and see if we can get the entire knife in for a measurement session way back down here so guess what we have an 11 inch knife just shy we're gonna call that 
We have a blade of five inches. We have a cutting edge of four and uh, almost three quarters because we do have a usable finger choil in there. As long as you don't get real frisky and push up on that, you should be okay. You can get your finger in sideways. How about handle thickness in inches? It's a flat-sided handle with a 0.54 thickness. Let's keep it in inches because you guys want the blade in inches. 0 0.10 or maybe 0 0.11. Let's see what we got in millimeters. 2.8 millimeters. So thin blade stock, yet not an overly thin point. That's a good thing. With that low grind, it keeps it a little more slicey than you would expect. It is a flat grind on the cutting edge, I'm pretty sure. There's not enough of it there to really tell if it wasn't, but, and it's a thin stock. So we're going to call that a flat grind. Okay. Now the original was pretty heavy. Let's see what the weight is on this guy. Here we go. So we've got 5.7 ounces. Not inordinately heavy for an almost 11 inch knife. <laughs> nice action. The original, I'm going to show you in a minute, did not have a nice action. And this is beyond drop shut. I mean, it's drop shut, but it's not exactly what you'd call pneumatic. Now, as far as whether it's riding, I believe it is riding on bearings. You can see the, uh, the brass um, assemblies there for those bearings. It's just way too drop shut for it to be anything else. And if you happen to know different, certainly let me know. Now, interesting thing is you got a hole, but it's only about half showing. So, yeah, the detent is light enough. It's quite light, so you can use your thumb. But you need to get way up there in order to use the middle finger. So that hole is set way up near the pivot. But you can easily still do it. Okay. Right there. Not a problem because you can actually shake this knife out. Whether or not you can or would want to strengthen the detent, I'm not sure. Right now the lockup looks like it's uh, about 20% room for wear, but at the same time some of you may want a stronger, uh, deeper lockup. That's up to you. We've got some pretty thick liners and we have weight relieving, plenty of it. Look at that. Both sides. So I feel they did this one right. It is a departure from the original, which we'll bring out now. Same boxes. And there we have something that's kind of a twill carbon fiber on one side and solid steel on the other. Now, what did I say? That was 5.7 ounces, right? So what do we got on the original? Yeah, we've got uh, six, almost 6.1 ounces. So the original was a heavier knife because we've got that solid slab of stainless steel here. No, this is not titanium. It is definitely steel. And it came with a double lock. And it came with a pretty stiff detent, completely the opposite of the new one. Same clip, however, Screaming Skull. And lock up uh, a little more, maybe closer to 40% or so. And it is a frame lock as opposed to a liner lock. And it has a, a very tough release. Some of you may like that better than the one I just showed you. But it is, uh, if you're pressing on the bar, certainly, uh, you're going to have, and I'll tell you, that's a monster as far as trying to flip that open. One thing I didn't really like about it was that. Now, they added the hole, and we've got a knife that's about the same length. What they did here on the original two 
was offer that uh, glass breaker which I suppose could be useful and it was still a switchable clip um, same blade shape except we have a offset grind on the new one as you can see and we have a grind right down the center on the original so they made some changes I tend to like them I like the knife is lighter it's certainly easier to manipulate uh, that's still almost completely drop shut. So as I say, I'm liking the new one. And when I saw it and saw the materials made from it and how the action was so good, I jumped on it. So it's 100 bucks from Blade HQ. And Blade HQ, as far as I know, are the only ones importing these. Now here is the Sting. This is a different design. Still got the Screaming Skull. We've got the JG-10 on this one. And we have an opening hole that's fully 100% accessible. I have a similar blade design, except with it being shorter, it looks more like an arrowhead. And a single grind on that one. Not the um, dagger-looking double grind. And all in all, just a little bit different setup. A lighter knife, more pocketable, but still coming in at just a shade under four inches on this one. But uh, a good deal lighter. Can thumb open it. Can spidey flick it. Pretty cool little knife. And it comes in a number of varieties. Check out Blade HQ. I'll make sure that you have the link. For those of you that can't find Blade HQ, can't look it up, <laughs> sorry for my sarcasm. I've gotten a little gripes in the past that I didn't put links in the uh, description. I guess it's convenient. What the heck? You see it, you want to get right out to it, and the, con the, the link is convenient. All right. So a light feeling knife, definitely well balanced. Where is the balance point? It's way back there, just behind the finger groove. But it feels good. Look at how much I've got left over, like two inches at least. I mean, this is a sword handle. You know, if you wanted, you could hold it way back here and have a whole lot of reach. No question about it, it's kind of a defensive built looking blade, certainly with the name Vendetta where somebody wants to stick it to somebody else. Um, as I say, watch your fingers. It's going to drop shut whether you want it to or not. It's just free falling. Try adjusting the pivot a little bit. Now, the pivot is a slotted screw. It did turn for me. As I began to tighten it up, I began to lose the centering on it, and I think I probably still have it somewhat tightened. It's just about perfect and came through just about perfect but as soon as I started cranking on that screw to see if I could make it a little tighter it started walking over to the other side so I brought it back pretty much to where it was so you want to see something impressive here is the usually large rat one <laughs> let's uh, even up the pommels here look at that it's like um, three and a half inches shorter, something like that. Actually, I was overestimating two and a half inches longer on the Vendetta. But still a huge difference. And uh, look at just the blade. Crazy. So a five-inch knife is going to be a five-inch knife for sure. Uh, for a hundred bucks, can you go wrong? I don't think so. It's a pretty cool knife. It's uh, mean-looking, <laughs> business-like, and now that they put uh, handle slabs on both sides, I kind of like it better. And uh, five point seven ounces again for an eleven-inch knife. Uh, that's it's going to feel light to you, believe me. So that is the Dagger Knives Vendetta in uh, green micarta. Here's uh, one other little feature.
There's the Screaming Skull pivot. It's kind of cool. And there's the Screaming Skull hole opener. Okay. That's what I got for you today. We'll be back soon with another knife review. Be well. Take care. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe.